Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, getting back to work on the MR2 in this one. Uh, this video, I think I'm gonna start off trying to work on the door cards. Uh, if you remember the uh, inserts I had from MR2 Heaven, couldn't get them to work easily with the uh, handle surrounds and I didn't wanna break anything. So I pulled those off at the time being just so I could get this thing to some shows and whatnot. Uh, so I think now I'm going to try and get the driver's door card off because that's the one that I messed with the insert and already cut the leather. So that is what I have to work with. Uh, so I'm going to take that off the door and uh, see what I can do, measure, make work, modify, etc. to make the inserts fit uh, with the proper handle surround and all of the other parts uh, and have it look decent and uh, not all butchered up. All right, so here we are. I'm down in my basement, so I apologize for the noise in the background. The heater was just running, and the humidifier is draining in the drain currently. Um, so here is basically what the problem is. I previously cut this. I have this uh, insert laying back over the door card, and I have the uh, trim piece laying in the door card where it would be from the factory. You can kind of see, if you look in detail, you know where the foam, where the edge of the... MR2 have an insert, this plastic here that my finger's on, that's the edge of that. There's a gap that I can almost fit my finger between, between the old door card and the uh, plastic backing on the insert. And then you can see that the hole, you know, doesn't line up. You can see the old fabric there. So, I mean, I'm not sure if I can use these inserts, at least not decently, without hacking them up. Um, you know, here's kind of what the design is it's you know aluminum and there's plastic and then there's thick foam and then the covering i mean i'm almost thinking if i took the padding out of it maybe it would be a little bit better because that padding is just it's so much and it's also not contouring right to the insert in the door because that's kind of concave the factory one it kind of goes in and then you, know, you have this. This has got a little bit of movement. I mean, it's not going to have much play in it, you know, once it's bolted in place. You, you know, you know where it's going to lay. And it just does not match up well with the hole for these inserts. So, I, mean, I almost would be better off just, I don't know. I'm not sure if, you know, I can remove that aluminum backing and try and find a way to make it work. I mean, I like the look of it. It's going to match the seats nice versus, you know, this pattern, which no longer matches because the seats have been recovered. Um, but yeah, that's the issue that I have to figure out how to fix. All right, so things have escalated. Um, I think big part of the problem I'm running into is just how concave this is. It's, you know, dishes in, whereas we had this aluminum that it was glued to that, as you can see, there's no longer glued to. It just wasn't fitting flush, and it was just causing it to be too thick. So now that I've removed it from the aluminum, I have a lot more pliability. I can actually fit it to exactly where I need it and make it work. So I'm thinking that is going to be the way to go. Um, the hole that is actually in the fabric backing pretty much matches the handle cutout perfectly. So you have kind of a guide of where it needs to be. So basically, I think if I can get the leather stretched and wrapped around to the back side of this backing and adhere it in place, and then I could just adhere this directly to the door card, I can probably pull the existing fabric off and just glue this. You know, I'll have to tuck these edges back over and glue them down from where they were on the leather before, or the... Uh, aluminum before and I can just glue this insert into the door. I'm thinking that is going to be the best way to fix this. The only problem I'm seeing is I do need to get some of the foam out of here just to be able to kind of blend it down a little bit better and get it to tuck tight. It's just going to look weird. It's going to be real puffy and there's no way to get it get to it unless I remove the stitching because it's stitched to that backing. So I'm probably just going to have to very carefully remove it. You, know, you can see I was kind of tearing at it a little bit, just trying to see what I could get out. Um, but that's not a very precise way of doing this. So I think I'm going to have to just kind of take my time at it and slowly work it out. But I think that is going to be the best way 
to fix this problem. All right, so it's the next day. Um, wanted to kind of think about this last night. I think I've come up with a pretty valid plan of attack. Um, what I ended up doing is on the back side of this, I sliced, kind of made some access, and tore out all the foam basically from here forward, just to try and give somewhat of a flush edge so it'll have a point, and I can clean it up a little bit and you know make it a little bit more even, but I'm just trying to you know spitball things basically. Uh, but anyway, if I do that, I can get it to the point uh, when it's positioned right, where I can go ahead and put the trim piece in. It fits in right where it's supposed to fit. It stretches it enough and it covers where I had had that little slice that went too far back. So I think I'm gonna be able to make this work. And then this will rest on top of the leather. Everything will be where it's supposed to be. Um, you know, there'll be a little bit of a dip down here. I can actually maybe fill this in with something softer that's, you know, not doesn't have as much strength to it just to try and, you know, fill that gap. Um, or at least, you know, maybe do like a triangular piece or something like that just to kind of give it more of an edge or a gradual flow down. Um, I'll think about that. But first thing I think I have to do is fix these edges where I'd peeled it back. I'm just going to use some glue and glue them down all the way around and let that set up overnight. Um, and then I can mess with trying to fit this to the door in a way that everything will be covered and I can make this a uh, pretty much permanent addition. Um, I am probably gonna use, as far as uh, adhering that to the door goes, I'm probably gonna use just really thin double-sided tape. This stuff is really strong. Um, and I can put it along the outer perimeter and some strips down the center since that's a plastic backing. Uh, I will probably have to cut out the blue fabric that's underneath it, and that way it can just adhere right to, sorry, I accidentally hit the button, um, but that way it can adhere uh, directly to the uh, back, the actual structural cardboard, fiberboard, whatever you want to call it, uh, that makes up the door. So I'm going to go ahead and get that glued. I'm probably just going to use goop, which is a good general adhesive, and it works fine on this type of stuff uh, to glue the edges down, and that way I have something a little more solid to work with for uh, actually fitting it to the door. All right, so here we are. I've got the goop around the corner, you can, or around all the edges. You can see it's all taped down in place. This is what I used. Just goop adhesive, stuff works great. Um, so yeah, the spots where it was wanting to peel back a little bit, they're a little more difficult. You can see I've got some tape holding it down. So I'm going to let that cure overnight, and then uh, tomorrow I can come back and see about fitting this thing to the actual door. All right, here we are next day. Tape is all removed. Everything is in its place where it's supposed to be. So we're good there as far as the edges being glued down. Uh, so the next step is going to be figuring out, getting this onto the current door panels, as well as getting this, uh, making this look right as far as getting this to kind of angle down here past where the foam is cut and then just kind of blend in and flatten out. So. I have an idea how I want to do it. Um, I'd mentioned previously double-sided tape. I'm thinking that might be the best bet, like do run a line of double-sided tape here along where the, uh, the foam is cut just to try and hold it down because I'm not sewing it. I'm not going to be doing any stitching or anything, uh, but that should at least kind of get a defined break. And then I can glue you know, this area here down to the bottom um, and hopefully it'll stay in place that way. So. I'm going to grab the actual door panel, start messing around, see if I can come up with a plan of attack. All right, so looking at my situation, what I'm trying to do, what I've done is I've got some double-sided tape on the inside here. Then I'll peel the red off. That is basically going to be to try and hold and keep the leather taut. I'm just worried about, you know, trying to pull on it and then the glue drying. If I use that glue, it takes too long for the glue to cure. It's The glue is not going to hold it, obviously, and I'm not going to get the... Uh, the leather stretched how I want it. So I went ahead, did that. That should at least hold it in place. And then I can put glue around the outer edges and along the uh, inside here and whatnot, and then just glue it down to the uh, existing door card as needed. And then that should work. I'll just put some weight on top of it, let it sit overnight, and hopefully we will have a winner. All right, well, here we are setting up. Uh, hopefully this does the job. Um, I put 
like I said, glue around the perimeter of the panel. Got it, you know, flush. I'm gonna have the uh, boards and, or the pieces of two by four and the gallons of coolant holding down pressure on it. Um, I was able to stretch the leather here and that double-sided tape I'd put between it and the backing is seeming to hold it in place, but I did put a couple of sandbag weights on it as well as just, you know, this can of spray paint at the front, just you know, it's a full can to put some pressure on the front of the uh, panel. So hopefully the glue will adhere properly and everything will be in place. So I'm gonna let this set up and we'll see what we uh, turn up with. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead on the passenger one. I still need to do the complete disassembly, remove the aluminum backing plate from this one. Thankfully, I didn't cut a hole in this one yet, so that'll make my life a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about trying to stretch leather as much as I did with the other side um, and get it, you know, and have it stay in place and whatnot. But um, I'll still, you know, cut the foam and everything, just to try and match it up as best as possible, and then go ahead and glue the outer perimeter on it, so that'll be ready. And then maybe tomorrow I can go ahead and glue this to the passenger door panel. All right, backing is removed from the passenger side insert, so I'm going to go ahead, get it glued up, get everything tacked down, and uh, should be done as far as gluing goes today. All right, and there we are, all glued and set up to dry overnight. So everything's taped down, um, so yeah, just let this sit and come back to it tomorrow. All right, and went ahead and took off the passenger door panel in anticipation of installing that door card on it tomorrow. And then next thing on my list I want to address, I have the T-top out on the passenger side, and this is the side where the top was not lining up here. It was actually staying, or when you latched it, it was too far in, creating an actual visible gap you could see through. So I went ahead and got the eccentric T-top guides. Uh, so they just replaced the plastic guides right here, and then the one right here. So I'm just doing this side for now because I don't think the driver's side was a problem. It looks pretty well lined up. I'm just going to do the passenger side, see how it turns out, and then go from there. So I am going to go ahead, get these old ones removed, and the new ones installed. All right, easy enough. These just popped out. I used a real uh, small flat blade screwdriver and just kind of got into the actual interior of it and just pulled a little bit and they popped right out. So you can see the holes are squared off in the actual chassis. And you can see on the back, these are squared off. So with the eccentrics, I'll just, you know, put them in angled, uh, you know, with the square so that the eccentric is out, the holes as far out as possible. So that should keep the T-top aligned more towards the out of the vehicle and fill in the gap that it currently has. So I'm going to go ahead and get these eccentrics installed. And real quick, you can see the offset, you know, one side's thicker than the other. So that is what they're designed to do is push the T-top out. So time to just pop these into place. All right, push them into place. Got the T-tops installed and latched. I mean, I can already see that the rubber at least lines up now. Before this was pulled back, especially here, because this is where the big problem was. You know, it actually had this uh, seal pulled in further. So let's close the door and see where things are gonna line up. Let's a couple of those pieces of wiring in so they don't hang out. All right. Well, I mean, it's still in dents a little bit there with the eccentric. There you go, now you can kind of see, but you can't see daylight through it anymore. Uh, maybe a little bit you can. So I don't know if that's gonna solve my problem or not. Uh, what I might do is pop it out. You can change the angle. Um, maybe I can fix it that, or I'm going to put a slice in this actual seal from behind and fill it in with some uh, backer rod which would actually cause it to push out i actually had to do that on my old miata uh, the seals on that were kind of wore out and put a little bit of a backer rod in the inside of the seal because it's hollow and that actually pushed it out and it uh, did the job a little better then so let me see what i can do with this uh, that might be the way to go all right so i took the uh, eccentric out and tried pivoting it just to see if you know because there is a possibility of having it a little bit high or a little bit low, just based on how this thing's designed and the angles and whatnot. And both both ways I tried it, I still have a gap right there. Um, you know, the seal you can see it's just kind of deformed. I'm guessing it's just age, but you know, it, right here is where the problem lies. It's just pushed in, and it just doesn't want to seat right. So um, I think this is going to be an ongoing issue. 
um, I'm not sure. I know you can get replacement seals. I'm not sure if that'll fix the problem or if, like I said, I should just try and cut into it from behind and fill it to give it some more support. Because um, the door is pretty much adjusted right. I mean, I've got it pretty tight up here. Um, I don't think adjusting the door anymore is going to fix the issue, the door glass. Um, it seems to be the seal itself. It's just not not lining or upright anymore. It's probably you know, just age. So I have to look into that, see what my options are. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to have to end up... I'm guessing this is just going to have to be replaced, unfortunately. Uh, that's probably going to be my, my best option, just to stop the leak on the side. Yeah, and just for comparison's sake, coming over to the driver's side, it doesn't have that bow in like the passenger side does so yeah i think it's just the seals worn and uh, i think it's more than the eccentrics are going to fix so maybe one of those things where i just need to go ahead and order new seals for the t-tops uh, according to the person i bought the car from the surround seals were recently replaced and are not that old and they seem to be sealing and holding up fine but uh, i don't think they did the t-top seals all right, so next thing I'm gonna do while I'm waiting on all this stuff to dry is I have an injector cover from M2 or um, Rat2 Motorsports. So basically you ba uh, remove the two bolts that hold the injector rail in, which I've already loosened them. And then this will go on top of them. It comes with new hardware with a couple of spacers. Um, you can see here. So yeah, just take the old bolts out, put the old bolts in with spacers and uh, zip it down. Um, I did have to bend up the bracket for the wiring harness just to make enough clearance for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and uh, get the bolts tightened and then I'll show you what the final result is. All right, there you go, final result. Easy enough to install. Um, just had to unclip the three holders for the wiring. Also had to bend this bra the bracket for this one back and up a little bit and uh, loosen it to pivot it just to make sure it would fit around the uh, cover and then like I said, it's the two bolts that hold the injector rail in. I have got the bolt and the washer above the cover and then there's a plastic spacer on each side below so you can see how it looks and then here's from behind and passenger or driver side so yeah pretty happy you know just adds a little dress up looks a little bit nicer you know when you're walking behind the vehicle and just see that little MR2 right there, so job done. All right, so uh, this video has gone a lot longer than I thought. Uh, so I think with that installation complete, I'm gonna end it here and I'll just have to pick up uh, with the door cards in the next video because there's just no way I'm gonna get everything done with that this weekend and I need to get a video out. So uh, that being said, uh, hope you're learning something, hoping you're taking something away from these videos. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Uh, thanks and have a great day.